the I Am Rappaport Stereo, Stereo Podcast, Podcast. Live. Live. You're down with Rappaport? Yes, I am. 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 You're yes, I am. You better tune in, I am Rappaport.com. Cause every single podcast, you know he drops bombs. I seen him on set, a seasoned vet with true talent. Catch him on his way to CrossFit, rocking the new balance. He asked me to do the track, cause he know I rhyme elite. But I'm just waiting for the Robert De Niro line of the week. week. Breakfast of champions, toasted bagel, cream cheese, and lox. This is I am Rappaport, the show never stops. We might catch him out in public, stretching his knees. But if you don't listen to the show, yo, wiggle, please. Wiggle, please. This is the I Podcast. All right. This is the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast coming live and direct from the gloom tomb. My name is Michael Rappaport, a.k.a. <clears throat> Mr. White Folk. Uh, some people know me as the Gringo Man Dingo. I think I'm going to just go by the Gringo Man Dingo from now until we get set up into the fantasy football season. As many of you may or may not know, the Dingo was created around the whole concept of domination when it comes to fantasy football. It's around the fucking corner. So the gringo's back. I'm here with G Moody. Last name rhymes with duty. Yep. Always ready. G Mo Netty. This is true. A lot of things to talk about. Hell yeah. Every single day, there's more and more craziness. More and more things that entice the the Disco 2, the Malachi brothers. Um, As you know, Dallas, we're coming to shut shit down July 29th. Live in Dallas, Texas. Doors open at 7 p.m. Show, live show at 8 p.m. with me, G. Moody, Kenyon Martin, Kmart from the Two Man Weave, and very, very special guest, the 30th, the next day. The big three will be in Dallas. This is a live show. There's going to be a whole lot of shit talking. Tickets are available at IamRappaportTour.com. Trust me, they will sell out soon, so get them now while they are still available. There's going to be special guests. It's going to be a special show. We're known for shutting shit down with our live shows. That's for show. I mean, everywhere we went on this now year and a half United States world tour, we've, we've, <laughs> we've shut it down. Yes. Um, we've got no complaints. We do meet and greets with the people after for free. It's our privilege. It's our pleasure to fuck with you after the show. And we're going to be doing it live July 29th. Texas Theater. Show at 8. Special guest. Kmart's going to be in the building. And all I'm going to say is the entire Big 3 crew will be in Dallas. Rest assured, I'm going to have a whole bunch of motherfuckers show up to the show. Hell yeah. (laughs) That's dope. Um, Can't wait. Looking forward. So, so Monetti. What's up? OJ Simpson is paroled. He's going to be let out of jail um, October 1st. I believe he'll probably let out of jail a little bit before that. Where do we start with motherfucking OJ? Oh, man. I, 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 what, what's the over and under in Vegas? What's the line on him uh, getting out and getting with a, with a white chick? That's that's the thing. Can I bet on that? That you know, like you can bet on all kind of shit at the Super Bowl and all kind of stuff. I should be able to bet on whether he's going to get a white girl after all he's been through. Oh, he'll he'll have himself a nice little snow bunny within 24 hours. He's probably got a whole bunch of pen pals lined up. Yeah. OJ yeah. Simpson is the charter member of the White Girl Syndrome. He is the face of white girl syndrome. If there's new listeners to the I Am Rappaport Stereo podcast, um, this is a disease that was diagnosed by Dr. G. Monetti. Yep. Dr. Moody, um, just give a brief history on what white girl syndrome is and why 
OJ is the charter member of this community. Please. Okay. Okay. Thank you. When, 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 when a brother loses his mind just, just to go with the white chick, we call that the syndrome. Like, you wouldn't do that for nobody else. So you have a syndrome and so a behavior that you lose your mind, you lose your sensibilities, you don't know what the fuck you're doing, and it usually ends up, well, with OJ, this is, used, this is what happened. Yeah. So he uh, represents all the, the worst of the syndrome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, things, things, went, things went to the left, to say the least. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. With OJ and his, his pang for, for, yes. for, for white chicks. I don't care who you mess around with. Do what you want to do. But whoever yes. it is, don't put any females or don't put any guys talking to the ladies ahead of your well-being and your goddamn sense. I've been down that road. <laughs> My history has been documented. It ain't worth it. It ain't going to solve it. Wrap yourself up in a little blanket, turn yeah. on some Bobby Womack, and in the and, and, and in a few hours, the morning will come and everything will be all right. Yes, and and remember, uh, when he was with uh, the black woman, the black white, he didn't separate himself from from black people. When he got with the white woman, then he started to say, "I'm not black." I'm OJ. Yes, yes. I'm not so, black. I'm so OJ. any any sick thinking like that is a is is a is symptomatic of the syndrome. <laughs> so your first question is if Vegas is going to take any lines, any action on I, I don't think it's a yeah. matter of if he'll get himself a little snow bunny. It's a matter of when. I think Vegas, yeah. you, you, if, if we really brought this up to some people in Vegas, it's a matter of when. Like, when will he claim something? Right, right. It could be, it could be wagered on. That should be able to be wagered on due to his history. So what, what do you think about OJ getting out? Like, you, we, we, everybody watched the probation hearing. It was disgusting. He, he's so... Um, there's no humility after all the shit that he's done, after all that he's been through. Like, right. he, he, he's just so reactionary, and he's still, right. like, the same motherfucker. I mean, I, I, I don't understand it. I mean, yo, they, uh, everything is gone. They took, you know, his life, everything is different. Man, for him to get out, I guess he's just happy. Yo, like, yo, I didn't... I, like, you probably didn't even think he was going to get out. And now it's like, yo, my life is basically over. You know, I'm like a laughing stock. Like, how else would you be? You know, you, you'd have, you'd just be like, fuck it, I'm out. I'm happy. Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know. He's got about two more months uh, in jail, and then he's getting out. And then O.J. Simpson, and you know, there's, there's liens on all his stuff. He gets $19,000 a month from the NFL, but everything he earns aside from that, the, the Goldman family collects and you know, they're going to be on him. Imagine how they must be feeling right now. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, the whole thing is just, the shit is surreal. And to think about where we came from, 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 I think it was 1994 with the OJ chase and the trial and where we are to, today. So many things have changed in the world, but but so many things are the same. You know, uh, uh, race yeah. is is just a never ending jigsaw puzzle that provokes, that enrages, that confuses, that um, causes violence, uh, and all sorts of things. And you know, it's interesting. You know, we've been talking about the the race issue in the Conor McGregor Floyd Mayweather fight. And, and, yeah. and, you know, as you may or may not know, I assume if, if you listen to the podcast, you follow me on some sort of social media. So you know I'm active. Um, I sent out a tweet a couple of weeks ago. I said, when Conor McGregor is cocky, arrogant, and disrespectful, it's deemed fun and playful. When mm -hmm. black athletes do the same, it's deemed obnoxious and classless. 
Yes. I've gotten yes. more comments, more responses, pro and anti, agreeing, not agreeing, calling me a race baiter, all these different things from that one tweet than all the tweets I've ever made. Mm. Yeah, that's a tricky topic, man. I mean, yo, that's how the that's how the media presents shit. That's how they do it. You know what I'm saying? And they present that and, you know, people see it. They see the difference, you know, and that's what it is. That's what they do. You know, and then and then a lot of people were like, you know, why are you saying that? You're a race baiter. Uh, what about Muhammad Ali? First of all, when Muhammad Ali first came on the scene as Cassius Clay, he was a uh, public enemy number one. He didn't become beloved for a long time. Oh, they hated this fucking guy, man. They hate. Muhammad Ali was hated. hated. Muhammad Ali was hated, you know, and. After a while, now when he, you know they were like, "Oh, he stood up for his rights and and um, he didn't go to the military. He was real, you know." But they hated this guy. Hated him, and we're not comparing this fucking Conor McGregor or this fucking Floyd Mayweather to the great Muhammad Ali. Not not by a, right. not, not by a long chance. But no. when you see like Rob Gronkowski running around with his shirt off in the summer and yeah. spiking the football and doing all that. It's it's playful. It's fun. It's just Gronk being Gronk. When Antonio Brown is out there twerking and doing all that other shit, it's cocky. Yeah. And and I'm not saying everybody feels this way because, you know, I'm saying this. It's like, you know, listen. This is the way it, yeah, this is the way it's presented to the viewer. Yo, what what if James Harrison was running around uh, without a shirt on, uh, you know, they wouldn't call that shit playful. No. They would say, why don't he just grow to grow up? Yeah, that would be frightening. James Harrison would be looked at as a thug, intimidating, yeah. criminal, jailhouse. Yep. Imagine James Harrison running around with his fucking shirt off. What, what, how that would, it would get a rise out of people. Gronkowski. Chugging a beer. Now, it's not all black athletes. And I don't understand why these conversations offend people. Like, people right. were literally offended by my tweet. They were offended. Listen, when, when, when you throw a rock into a pack of dogs, the only one that yell is the one that got hit. So you hit motherfuckers, and they know what time it is. They know how, that's how, that's how it's presented. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you said, Gronkowski, he can do no fucking wrong. Let these other motherfuckers run around with their shirt off and uh, these tight ends, the black tight ends, and be chugging a beer and, and uh, grabbing women and doing all kinds of shit. They would arrest these motherfuckers easily. And, 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 and I'm not here to say that I'm, I'm crystal clear, crystal clean, and I'm in touch with fucking race and religion and anti-Semitism, and I'm fucking pure. I'm not, by any means. I just... Think the conversation is important. I think it's important to make mistakes. I think it's important to step on toes. I think it's important to offend people. I think it's important to be offended. And I think it's important to take all that and lean forward and move forward and take a minuscule of information and maybe rethink the way you, me, everybody looks at things. By no means am I fucking crystal, you know, clear and pure. I don't think anybody is. Nobody's yeah. right. Nobody's wrong. I'm, the fact of the yeah. matter is, is that race is the never, ever ending jigsaw puzzle. And, and, and to sweep it under the rug and to try to say that uh, it doesn't exist and, and, and that people don't have their, their things that make them uncomfortable or offended or scared is bullshit. That, that's the only thing that I'm aware of uh, the, in my point of view is that I know those things in myself and I think it's important to have those conversations. And of all the tweets that I've said, all the offensive things that I've said, all the obnoxious, bugged out things that I've said, for that to be the most responded to tweet that I've ever had, to me, yeah. is, is bugged out. It's, it's yeah. bugged out. And the reality of it is, there's so many racial undertones with this McGregor-Mayweather fight, and it's going to all come to a head 
uh, uh, you know, the week before that fight, because that's when it's going to, you know, when it becomes real. And I think it's okay. great. I think it's fantastic. I don't think it's anything to shy away from. I think we can learn something about ourselves uh, in, in the midst of paying $99 for what's inevitably going to be a boring fucking fight. Basically, Floyd Mayweather is fighting an amateur. <laughs> He's going to win that fight easy. Uh, this guy just got his boxing license uh, two months ago. Uh, first professional fight. It's basically equivalent to fighting uh, me or you. Yeah, it's going to be a boring fight. And he's not going to knock him out. And I've said it before. It's going to be a boring fight. And yada, yada, yada. Speaking of race. Yeah. Speaking of race, yes. Mr. Moody. Yes. Um, Beyonce, Queen, Queen B, Bay. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. She had her figure done at the Madame Toussaint wax museum and i saw that people are very upset because in the photo it appears that beyonce is a little bit more light-skinned than she appears just a little bit a little bit more light-skinned uh, than she appears in the videos um oh and, i didn't think no go ahead please oh I, I i didn't think so i thought they got it spot on you know when you whitewash yourself they only make what they see. Right. So if you got the blonde hair and, you, you, you know, your skin is lighter somehow, well, they're going to make that. So if it's whitewash, just blame yourself because you put that out there. So they drew and they wax figured what they see. Uh, and I you agree. Nobody's complaining. That. Nobody's complaining that the hair is wrong. Nobody's complaining that the, the, the two and a half foot blonde hair, which is obviously not natural, is wrong. No, nobody's upset right. about that. All the right. people that are Let's offended that she's whitewashed, but nobody's upset with Beyonce that for her 20-something year career as being arguably the biggest star in the world, certainly of the last 10 years she's the biggest. When she, when she came out, she wasn't the biggest, but she's built herself into that. Hell yeah. During that entire career, she's had extensions, weaves, and giving herself blonde Suzanne Summer curls. So if they <laughs> made her skin tone a little bit lighter than it normally is, why aren't you complaining about the fact that they didn't give her an afro or some braids? Because she doesn't wear her hair like that. She wears her hair like fucking Suzanne Summer. Right, right. I say now it's time to relinquish the blonde wig. Relinquish, vanquish. Get that shit out of here. You don't need under that shit no more. You you already you already put on already. You got put on and you made you an icon. It's time to let that shit go, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're beautiful without the blonde weave. She's Word. clearly beautiful. She's clearly ridiculously talented. Why the fucking weave? And and if you're gonna yeah. and if you're gonna be mad at Madame Toussaint for over or for making her skin a little lighter, why aren't you mad at Beyonce for wearing a blonde yeah. wig? You're not Suzanne yeah. Summer. You're not Pam Anderson. Why do you have yeah. a blonde weave on for your entire the entire duration of your career? I don't understand it. When you're gorgeous, you're fucking yeah. Beyonce. I know. You don't need that shit. And you're talking about Becky with the good hair. What about you? Yeah. I, and I didn't know hair had moral qualities. My hair is good. Shit. What the fuck you talking about? Well, you, you don't have any. You shave your hair. But the shit I shave is good. Yes. Yes, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's very good. Oh. Yeah. Speaking of race. Oh, yeah. Uh... You know that uh, NBC sportscaster, uh, uh, Mike Tirico? He said he is not a black guy. And, and wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mike Tirico said he's not black? What did he say he is? He said he's not black. And I'll read you the quote. This, this uh, article came out in 1991. They pulled it out. It's, this is his quote. When oh, yeah. people go around and say, you are black, well, I don't encourage it, but by the same token, I don't back off of it. If you want to call me that, that's fine. But you know, in my whole family, there's nobody I know 
who is black. Now you've seen this motherfucker, right? Well, what, what is the he fuck talk? Does he think he is? I, he thinks he's. Uh, he said Italian. His mom. Oh, get the listen. fuck out of here! What the fuck is he talking about? He ain't a fucking Italian. He's not fucking Paisan. <laughs> this is this is what he said. I think what happened was, you know, maybe you know, single mom, maybe mom Duke strolled over to South Jamaica, Queens. Met one of the brothers out there. Boom, boom, bam. Something happens. There you go, Mike. It could be that. That could be the only reason that you're the only black person in this whole family. Doesn't that seem unusual, motherfucker? Yeah, what, what is they he told talking you? about? What, what they what, told you? Why are you going out of your way to say that shit? Yeah, this is that sickness. This is that uh, um, a self-medicating shit. Well, he, he will say he's anything but black. When it's clear, when you look at him, this is a black man. That's that, that's that mental sickness. It's like a, a disease, man. Like you, it's a self-hatred where you want to be anything but black. Because cause you don't see Irish motherfuckers saying, you ask an Irish motherfucker, uh, what are you? Oh, I'm Irish. No problem. Somebody, a Scottish person. Scottish. Why is it always... These type of clowns, man, that be, oh, um, I'm not black. That look, look at him. Look at the guy. <sighs> what part of the bus would this guy be on in 1950? Yeah. If if he got arrested, what would he be described as on the arrest report? Don't bullshit yourself. Uh, stop dealing in a fantasy and deal with reality. What you see in the mirror is a black person. There's no shame in that. The fuck? You're trying to trying to do something that's impossible. Yeah, I don't know Kill what the that fuck is wrong with this fucking guy, man. Look at yeah, look, look man. at fucking Tiger Woods. He tried that shit. Yeah, motherfuckers need a wake-up call, like a service. When, when you get out of hand and you think shit is sweet, yo, this is what it is, B. So, and, and then for you to say that, you just look really stupid, man. Yeah, you look really fucking dumb. Yeah. Um, Miles, please cue the sick fuck of the week music. This award is earned, not given. It's called the sick fuck of the week. This guy is really sick. Lock him up. How could you do it? Don't let him out. Damn. You fucked the dog? You what? You fucked the dog? Why would you fuck the dog? Why would you fuck your girlfriend's dog? What? Sick fuck. The sick fuck of the week. It's earned. Earned. Not given. You did what? No. no! 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 Yes, yes, yes. This is the sick fuck of the week. This is an award that is earned, not given. It is an award that is earned, not given. This is given to a uh, a certain type with a certain uh, je ne sais quoi, as the French say. Uh, this is fucked up. Florida. A bunch of teens, teenagers, uh, laughed as a disabled man drowned in a pond. The teens sat there and mocked. The 32-year-old disabled man did nothing. Screaming at him, poking fun, laughing Damn. while a guy died right in front of their face, you sick fucks. You detached from reality animals. Yeah. Now, yeah. you're probably going to get arrested, okay? And you're probably going to go to some sort of juvie, and uh, your life's fucked because you think things are funny. <laughs> you, you, you know what's funny? SpongeBob SquarePants every day for the next 17 years of your life in prison, you fuck. Then you're going to think mm. something's funny. When you got to watch fucking cartoons for the rest of your life because you're in fucking jail and they only got four channels, you fuck you. <laughs> right. <laughs> These other teenagers in London facing 15 charges in connection to going up to random people instead of robbing them the good old-fashioned way, 
They're throwing acid in people's faces. <laughs> Throw what? <laughs> acid in people's faces. Oh. Like, you know, to disfigure them and burn them. Oh, man. Yo, this, this, you should be shot. They should be fucking, <laughs> yo, doing shit like that, yo. No rules, man. If we catch you, we do what we want. Well, well why, why do we need to uh, rehabilitate an animal like that? What, what good yeah, are they yeah. going to be? Yeah. Yeah. Doing shit like that, that's a crime against humanity. Like, that's just so out of the loop. When we catch you, we're going to do what we want. Yeah. You know that also in the United Kingdom, <clears throat> there is, uh, I call it an epidemic. Vagina surgery is being sought by girls as young as nine years old. Women, for what? Girls as young as nine years old are so upset by the way that their vaginas look. They want to get them reshaped, shortened, and fixed while they're teenagers, girls. Mm. I don't understand that. Uh, it's hard to comment on. Uh, a nine-year-old worried about her her vagina. And how I don't it looks. I don't understand it. Yeah, that's sick shit, B. That's all that is. That's sick shit. Yeah. That's why we don't understand it. Right, and that's why we have it in the sick fuck of the week segment. It's <laughs> uh, we didn't yeah. just throw it in there in the middle of the, uh, you know, <laughs> the other segments. Right. There's a reason right, why right. it's an award-winning segment called the sick fuck of the week segment. <laughs> uh, yes. It's very clear. I have one. Oh, a sick fuck of the week? Yes. Oh. Uh, the barbarians who get joy from killing uh, the creator's defenseless creations executed Cecil the Lion's son. Yeah, motherfuckers. Remember Cecil the Lion? The, yes. the, the lion that was shot down by some paid hunters? It's not like they go yes. out into the bush and fight these animals mano y mano. No, they, right. they, they go to like an amusement park where it's all set up and they shoot them and they bring them home. Amusement of death. Now, it's a killing for no reason, right? And they call this a sport. Sneaking no. up behind an animal and blowing its brains out is not a fucking sport, yo. No. It's, and it's not like these animals have made their way into the cities and they're running amok and human beings are in danger. They're, they're attacking humans. They, these animals on two legs go to, the, to where the animals are living peacefully and will just blow them away. And, uh, yo, what, yo. I, I don't understand how that could be fulfilling. Yeah, I don't know, man. Hiding behind shit. They're running. You catch them out there on some sneak shit. Why don't you go out there with no gun and right. do some like like the Sudan, like Manu Bowl. Right. Manu Bowl killed the motherfucker with his hands. Right. A lion. Right. He gets props for that. Right. Manu Bowl was bout it, bout it. You're a fuck. Yeah. You're a fuck. Yeah. You're out there with your gun and your bow and arrows and whatever the fuck else yeah. you bring. And you think that's and you, cool? You think that's dope? And you hiding. And, and you hiding. You're, you're hiding with the gun. Manu Bowl went straight head. He went head up with the line. All right. Shout out to the late, great Manu Bowl. His son, uh, Bowl Bowl. Yeah. Is, nice. is, is the most highly recruited uh, 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 high school basketball player. Bowl Bowl is his name. Uh, we're trying to get him to go to St. John's. I don't know where he's going to wind up, but uh, uh, I know that me, uh, Ronnie Artest, and Chris Mullen, we want this fucking kid to go to St. John. So if you're listening, Bol Bol, and I suspect you're <laughs> probably not, uh, you're missing out. You're probably listening to the new 21 Savage record. Knock yourself out. You could be learning yourself by listening to the Iron Rapport Stereo podcast. But Bol Bol, if you're out there, you'll be in good hands at St. John's with Chris Mullen, Mitch Richmond, guys like Ron Artest, great basketball players come out of St. John's. Do yourself a favor. Don't be like everyone else, Paul Ball. If you can make it in New York, if you can make it in St. John's, you'll be in Queens, New York. You know what kind of a king you'd be? No one gives a shit about you. You're interchangeable in North Carolina and all these other big schools. You go to St. fucking John's, 
playing at the garden. I want to give a, uh, I, I want to give my man Woody Allen uh, keep his head up. He was out there doing one of his jazz concerts in uh, Germany, and uh, right. they, they came on stage. Topless protesters came on stage to try to interrupt Woody Allen's jazz concert. You know he plays the clarinet. Oh, the, the, the protesters are lucky that Woody didn't smack fire out of one of them. Uh, Woody ain't Woody ain't fucking nobody up, man. <laughs> Yo, listen. If I'm Woody Allen and you come on the stage while I'm there doing my thing, I'm smacking you with the clarinet. Yeah, I would. You would. Yeah, hell yeah. You on, you on my domain. It's anything goes. I'm up here trying to get this paper. Ah. And you come up on my shit. <laughs> you, you bullshitting around. Yeah. Yo, Woody got to smack fire at the guys, man. Uh, what do you think about this? The other day I suggested nobody, nobody took notice of this for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but I suggested the New England Patriots change their name to the Boston Patriots, not a peep. No, no one gravitated to that. No one agreed with me. No one understood my point of view. That's fine. But Tom Brady is writing a self-help book about how to become Tom Brady. Oh, this guy's full of himself, man. Yeah, nobody wants to fucking you... be like you, Tom Brady. Word. Because you could throw a football? Who gives a fuck, man? And you cheated. Yeah, what about you, you think we want to read a self-help? <laughs> you might sell that shit, you know, in New England and in, you know, that area. But the rest yeah. of the country doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, we don't care. We don't, the Giants beat y'all. We don't give a fuck about that, man. He's got a cookbook and now he's got a self-help book. What the, what the fuck do you think you are, man? Yeah, what about a fucking air pin book? Right. Why don't you do a deflate, you know, air out of a balloon book? Do some yeah. magic tricks. How you make air yeah. deflate out of ball book? Right. Sponsored by Wilson. Yeah. You can throw a football good. So what? <laughs> uh, what else you got, Moody? Uh, I heard uh, Jada Pinkett was out there getting money in Baltimore, moving bricks. She said she was a, a drug dealer when yeah. she met Pop. Yeah, she was a fucking so, um, drug dealer. She 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 yeah. said she was pushing that weight, right? Yeah, I expect to see her on the cover of Feds magazine. Uh, she, yeah, she said she was uh dealing drugs and um, let me let me say this, uh, going hand to hand as a low level low on the low totem pole of the whole drug thing isn't considered being a drug dealer. No, that's her fried chicken wings and rice money. Right. Don't bullshit yourself, girl. Yeah, you, 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 you sold a couple of dime bags for one semester in the 12th grade. Cut the shit, Jada. Right. And and then Tupac walks around the corner. He buys some weed for you. You strike up a friendship. The rest is history. Yeah, <laughs> cut the shit. She's just promoting her new uh, her new movie that actually looks fun. Um, and then yeah. she said, but she's going to save the rest of the story for her book. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Yeah. She was in b more. Getting it in. Yeah, right. She had two blocks. She held it down, yo. She said she had two fucking blocks. That's what's coming in the book. Right. She's going to tell the story like The Wire was all about her. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, Everybody man. knows that I am about that fantasy football life. Me, G. Monetti are going to be at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, Sunday, August 20th. And we're not going to be there alone this time. We're going to be podcasting, yes. But this time, we got Matthew Berry, Trey Wingo, Jim Brewer, and the motherfucking Gronk. The Dingo and the Gronk are meeting in Gillette. It's good, like, it's like a fucking monster movie. The Dingo meets the Gronk live. Mm. In Foxborough, Massachusetts, Sunday, August 20th, live podcast, the rest mock drafts, access to the field where the New England Patriots play. I am about that fantasy football life. Come up there, rock with us. It's all fantasy, everything. Me, Matthew Berry, Trey Wingo, Jim Brewer, and the motherfucking Gronk. Get in the fucking monkey cage live. Unless you're scared to dance with the dingo, you might be scared. 
Go to yeah. dancewiththedingo.com. Use the promo code DINGO to get $15 <laughs> off your tickets. It's going to be a fantastic event. Restrictions may apply. Promo ends August 19th, 2017. See the website for further details. Dancewiththedingo.com. Me and my good friends at DraftKings were doing it August 20th at Gillette. Uh, you got anything else, G? Yo, Game of Thrones creators creating uh, an alternative reality show called Confederate. It's basically what if the South won the Civil War, you know? So I'm look, I want to see that. I know it's going to be some uh, crazy shit. But a lot of these Confederate people, you know, now that these statues are, are, are the states are taking them down, they're all in an uproar. And I got one thing to say to these motherfuckers. Go ahead. Remember this. Robert E. Lee killed more Americans than Osama bin Laden. So Damn. Let, let's just rename Columbus Circle to Osama Circle. Right. And put up a statue of Osama. Cut the shit. These guys aren't heroes when you peel back the layers and to see all the shit that they did. You got to get rid of that shit and you got to come into the real world. Yeah. That was a barbaric. Animalistic behavior. Yeah, they can't be uh, saluted. You know, they, they shouldn't be saluted when you peel the, the layers back. And, and motherfuckers say, oh, you can't judge them in the context of their time. So it's never a good time to be raping babies, motherfucker. There's no Christ. good time for that. What yeah. the fuck you talking about? Yeah, what the <laughs> fuck is you saying? Right. Bullshit, man. That's it for me, man. All right. It's the end of the Iron Rap Boy Stereo Podcast. I'm not sure if you know this or not, but me, the gringo mandingo, I like to write. I've uh, tipped my hat about something special coming October 30th. Something big, something special in the writing world. There's more on that coming soon, but until then, we've started a blog that I've been adding to between podcasts. At BarstoolSports.com, we have the blog. We're winning in that world, too. Check us out at BarstoolSports.com. I love the blog. And trust me, I told you I like to write. I got something special coming. Yo, all the Buttersoft I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast t-shirts are available at BarstoolSports.com. Search for I Am Rappaport barstoolsports.com we got the new sucker shit t-shirt the gringo man dingo on white the I am Rappaport American edition and the cease and desist t-shirts just like the Kardashians did I wore mine on FS1 the other day it was fantastic I want to give a shout out to my man Jonathan David from the Clippers he's getting married this weekend to his sweetheart Stephanie God bless you good luck have a great wedding fantastic wedding and I'm done we're done. It's the Iron Rap Poor Stereo Podcast. Me, G Moody, last name rhymes with duty. The Gringo Man Dingo. We're out.